In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. I'm going to pass on the readings today, dear faithful, and go to the announcements, a couple of announcements for this Sunday. This feast that we're celebrating, the Solemnity of Our Lady, Her Assumption. As mentioned, after our preparation for consecration, we'll make that consecration today after Mass with benediction. So, here we will expose the Blessed Sacrament with incense and prayers, and then we'll start the consecration, which obviously many of you have already or have had it emailed to you, so you can recite it with me. If not, then simply reunite, unite your prayers to mine. I will be praying using the microphone, of course, so you'll be able to hear me. The new parish registration and email distribution is out. We sent out a new electronic parish registration form and email distribution. So please be sure to fill it out by next Saturday. The Feast of Our Lady's Immaculate Heart, that is the 22nd of August. And that will determine our updated mailing list. It's very important so that some of you are not left out of the important information or activities of our little mission. And then on Sunday, the 23rd, the bookstore will be uh, open after Mass. And we have a special edition for the bookstore this month, the weekend of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. There will be on sale books and religious artwork. So you can bring your cash and checks. The checks must be made out to St. John Paul's Commission. Please read through these announcements that we also send out by email. And then I wish, wish to mention again just a reminder about confession. If you want to try to get here close to 3 o'clock or 3.15, that assures that you're going to get through and get in confession. Otherwise, it gets too crowded at the end. And of course, as you see, I'm even late starting Mass because of details that I must take care of before Mass starts. We're just trying to be timely and not to make others wait. It's a matter of being charitable. I will keep pushing back as much as I can and offering, if necessary, a little more than an hour of confessions. But today I had to do a sick call to Licha off Cedeto. Please keep her in your prayers as we do all of those who are sick in our little mission. Licha is the wife of Joe Acevedo, who I buried last year, or a second earlier this year, that is. He died at the end of March, end of April, uh, well, yes, end of February. And so he was buried before all of this nonsense with COVID started. Licha has been just at home, rather kind of a prisoner there. And I saw her today, and I hope that lifted up her spirits. Please keep her in your prayers. When it comes to the whole question of communion, confession, and such like, for this consecration, remember you have to do that either eight days before a good work or eight days after within that. So if any of you went to confession last Sunday, it certainly counts for this, this today. And if some of you went to confession today, that's very good. And then even by next Sunday, you can make your confession for the purpose of this consecration. And to receive communion within the same determined time. If you can receive communion today, that's very good. If you did last Sunday, that's good. If you can do it next Sunday, that's very good also. So again, that's the gain, the plenary indulgence that goes with the faithful on this feast, the solemnity of Our Lady's Assumption, 
also the 11th Sunday of Pentecost, we must have great trust in the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I think that this feast day is very appropriate for coming to us in this time, what we would call a great crisis in the church and in society. And Our Lady is at the front of our charge. She's always there to lead us through our battles. At the risk of repeating some of what I give you today from what I gave in the YouTube video that's out there now, in the sermon of yesterday on the feast day, so be it. I wish to repeat a couple things. One thing is that throughout history, we have seen the Blessed Virgin Mary always coming to our assistance. The very truths that we have have made a large entry into our world through dogmas that the church has sought or thought best to dogmatize at certain periods of time. I think of the Immaculate Conception under the reign of Pope Pius IX. Very necessary at that time. Yes, to make clear a truth, but it seems to do something else for the church and for society around, showing the power of the church proclaiming Our Lady as such a great helper, significant person in the work of our salvation. So then even now, 1950, under Pius XII, that's much, close, much closer to us. He defined the doctrine on the assumption. Very important, I think, for a dogma to be defined in our more modern age, and we're in expectation of waiting what should have happened at Vatican II. The definition, proclamation of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Redemptrix, Mediatrix of all graces. We can see that if they had done this, wouldn't it be much more easy? It wouldn't have been maybe already done the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart. Of course, politics, bad men may play into the whole decision making of whether this was done or not. Our dear Archbishop Lefebvre was an expectation that greater things would be said of Our Lady at this pastoral council. But it wasn't. Why did they do that? Well, they're trying to capitulate, to not step on anyone's toes. Step on Our Lady. Yeah, we know that in, well, say when all is said and done, she will crush those type of enemies. We read, we can read, in the epistle of Judith, which is read at the Feast of the Assumption, that she would cut off the head of the enemies. I would not want to be an enemy of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yes, she's very sweet. She's a handmaid of the Lord. She's very humble. But don't let that fool you. Do you remember the Battle of Lepanto? Do you remember many other battles in history where Our Lady made herself known, showed herself powerful, and made all of those men who followed her victorious. It should bring a tear to our eye to hear these stories, how she's manifested herself and impressively just disbanded or finished off the enemy of the church. She could do it today, but men aren't willing to fight with her. They're not willing to conquer with her. They're too weak, as I told you before. The majority of men are just pushovers. They don't stand with Our Lady, they don't, they don't believe that she has the power that she's always had. So I told them in the sermon, they said, she is the one that's crowned with power, wisdom, love. She hasn't lost any of that. This Feast of the Assumption is just the beginning of this glorious triumph of Our Lady, who did so much with our Lord Jesus Christ and for the Church of 
for the apostles. Now look at her. Assumption is the fourth joyful mystery. The coronation of Our Lady is the fifth glorious mystery. This is the beginning of her triumph. Maybe and hopefully it could be for us too. She must be right now doing wonderful things among souls. Certainly amongst all of you who have prepared for this consecration. Who have made this type of novena, this crisis. Taken it serious, reformed. Be truly formed, not only just reformed, but be formed by the Blessed Virgin. Something great. Of course, we know what it is. We go to the Blessed Virgin Mary so that we may go to Jesus Christ. We want to go to Him. So we have to go through Her. He came to this earth through Our Lady. We have to go back to Him through Our Lady. Today's Gospel of the 11th Sunday, we read at the end of the Gospel that he, had, he did all things well. Dear faithful, if we want to do all things well, we have to do them with the Blessed Virgin. If you're saying your rosary, don't let that be a cloak for you to do bad things. Oh, look at that man, look at that woman. They say their rosary. And yet underneath, behind the scenes, are they truly married? Are they truly focused on the mysteries of our Lord, which they're meditating on, hopefully? Or is it some kind of superstition? I hope not. It should not be. We should do all things well. The Blessed Virgin Mary will help us to do all things well. We stick to our promises in this consecration, we keep up our rosary, and we strive to be manly for the men and feminine for the women. If we really want to do that, it's incredible what we'll be able to accomplish, how much we will conquer, how much the enemy will be squished through a Satan, and then the head's cut off of all of the henchmen. Well, I don't know about physically, but at least the reputation just finished. So they become nothing in society. That's happened before, and they can happen again. God is a very, I think he's very patient. Part of the reason I think he's so patient is because of the Latin Mass that said, the true blood of our Lord is shed on the altar many, many times a day. And that's distributed to the faithful. And then the Blessed Virgin Mary who holds back the hand of God, even of her son, lest he lose his patience. So, the reason we have even some semblance of peace, that there's any sort of religiosity left in this world, is because of the Latin Mass and the Rosary. Let it be clear. Because where were we going before? How fast we would have lost so much of what we take for granted today, sitting here, praying here. Without Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, where would we be? We wouldn't be having communion on the tongue. How many masses would not even be said correctly? You know how many times the priest has had this as he wishes in liturgical ceremonies, not even following his own rules? How many of them don't even believe? Many of them are not even so much as thinking that the Lord is really present in the Blessed Sacrament all the time. And I think, dear faith, we've been affected. We, too, act as though our Lord is, well, possibly there. Because we don't genuinely that properly. Maybe we speak around the Blessed Sacrament when we should be silent. We don't show the proper reverence. Boy, I sure blame the priests and bishops first. Not always get off scot free. If we believe in the Blessed Sacrament, if we believe in the One True Mass, if we believe in Our Lady, well then we better stand up and act like soldiers. What are we doing otherwise? Acting like slobs? We can act like a slob in the sight of God in dealing with His Blessed Mother. How can we do that? What gives us the right? 
Are we so big that we're comparable to God? No, we're so small. So small. And look at the enemies are overrunning the church and society today. Because we have thought ourselves so big that we're comparable to God. We're equal to God. We're so equal to God that we don't even have to genuflect people. We're so equal to Our Lady. Eh, we don't need that help. That's ridiculous. Boy, I think somehow, even though it's been a few thousand years, somehow we've got this non-servium going through our blood. Like Satan. He thought he could be, he should be, his great is gone. And then told Adam and Eve that they could be, but not by his power, God's power, but by their own. That's a lie. What a lie. And look at us. We fight just to maintain grace. We fight just to maintain our spiritual life. We know that we're very dependent on God and the Blessed Virgin. And yet, somehow we forget. As soon as things get a little easy, then we, then we forget. We cannot let that happen. But this consecration, you renew it frequently. Even this confraternity of Louis de Montfort, is offered to souls over the years. If you renew that consecration on certain days, you gain another plenary indulgence. So I'd like to let you know what those days are. I don't have them all memorized, so we'll have to put that in an email, on the bulletin, online, so you can see. But renew this consecration on, uh, on very specific days, holy days, feasts of the order of Louis de Montfort, then you gain a plenary indulgence. What a beautiful thing. So we can remain on top of our game. You can renew it any time. You feel yourself weak. Redo the consecration. Recite it again. Meditate on it. What are you saying? Well, you know what's really important in that line? A few lines is this line that says, I a sinner. So when we recite it, you want to say your name. I'll say my name. You have to say your name. I, so-and-so, a sinner. Not worthy. But I'm worthy only through the Blessed Virgin Mary. So I go through her. I ask her to speak for me to Jesus. That puts us right in our spot. Where we should be. So yeah, don't be praying your rosary. Just sort of a blah, blah, blah and then doing evil behind the scenes during the week or whenever you like. No. You're conforming yourself to what this truth is that you're holding on to. The mysteries of Jesus Christ that have conquered against the Muslims. Rosary was very powerful in the Pontiff. Right back to you. Even here in California, isn't it amazing? On the vigil of Our Lady's Assumption, we receive this judge, this judge who says, No, you, you people, Christians, you need to go back in your church. You can go back in your church. You don't have to use face masks, and you don't have to social distance. We'll take this to a hearing later in September. That's a victory. And it came from her, her vigil. Because of some of you were praying your rosary. Some of you, hopefully all of us, are doing a little penance. Now we are glorious, almost there, we're at least in the glorious mysteries. Something great is around the corner. Let's pray for it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. <laughs>